Arena, the Don Juan Banks, Tommy Razorstein. We are live in one of the most shocking moments of the year. Conor McGregor backed up everything that he said and knocked out Jose Aldo in a mere 13 seconds. Yes. At UFC 194 for the undisputed featherweight championship of the world. It's into the arena. It's live right now, Tommy Razorstein. We have the realest woman of ETA, Candace, <laughs> and we have C. Rich uh, Razorstein. Can you tell yeah, what's up, man? What is going through your mind after witnessing something just right, right in front of your face and the fact that you predicted it? It's crazy, dude. You know, we talked about this where, you know, um, Jose Otto was taking a lot of uh, wars in the gym, which is, you know, not too good to have. You know, you don't want to go through too many battles in the gym because you lose a lot of that chin. And, you know, that might be why he lost tonight because he hit Connor and Connor hit him, but Connor has the fresher, fresher chin you can definitely see. That old lion, you know, loses that chin. So it's it's really uh, not what you want in your gym to just go through all these these wars. Razor Stein, let's ask you right off the bat. Rematch. No, absolutely not. I, 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 uh, C, C Rich, is your microphone working? Corey, are you in? I don't, I don't think he can hear us right now. I disagree uh -huh. with you, Tommy Razor Stein. Um, I think that he, he never lost in the UFC before. He was a long reigning champion. I think he's due to rematch. I mean, Connor won undeniably. undeniably. I, 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 I'm I, I, I'm being quote right, but I think you cannot disparage what Jose Aldo accomplished in the past. The soccer stadium. Well, you know what? Joe Rogan already said it, and once Joe Rogan already says something, you know, everyone else follows along. And and that's just say? how it goes. And what did he say? When Joe Rogan says it. It's like, you know, official. Well, Joe say Rogan about? says it. Huh? What did he say? That uh, Jose Otto probably won't get a rematch. Wow. Because of the devastating nature of the knockout. 13 seconds. Put to sleep. Night, night. Bedtime story. rock a -bye, baby. Yep. Yep. <laughs> ah, I feel Candace, bad for Candace, him, too. You, I mean. Candace, were you able to see the knockout? To be technically honest, I really didn't see. I well, just like, you, heard you, you about it. Watch this right now. It's all over the media. It is trending. Razorstein, you will agree with me. It has to be. I think it, it, it may top to Ronda Rousey because of the, the, the just the immediacy of it. It, it. it happened so quickly. It was swiftly. It came through uh, like a thief in a night. Yep, like a ninja. Little stuff yeah. like. And Razor I mean, Stein, I would. Yes, yes. Razor Stein, I mean, me and you promoting this for the last month. Um, it was like we went on our own media tour. Uh, and, and to be correct, to be effective and efficient in the end, because it doesn't matter if you get anything wrong in the past, it's about getting the major fights right. This was um, undeniably the biggest fight of the year because of all the promotion. Can, can you tell people how you knew that this was going to happen? Well, the abuse that he took, um, you know, Jose Otto took a shit ton of mental abuse. And to go through that for an entire year, man, it's so hard to be mentally ready. He just, you know, never really looked comfortable. The only point in time that he actually looked a little bit comfortable was when he was at weigh-ins and the betting odds changed because he finally looked a little bit comfortable because he was mocking um, Conor McGregor a little bit. And it was like, okay, now he looks a little comfortable. He doesn't look so, you know, out of place. He's a champion. He hasn't lost in 10 years until today. 
but he looked uncomfortable as soon as he got in the octagon. He didn't look like, you know, he was the champion for 10 years. He looked like he was out of place, and Connor felt right at home. It, it was just an example of, like, you know, this is not what you want before you step into the octagon where you feel uncomfortable. And, like, it really showed throughout the whole entire time of interviews and everything. Uh, Tommy Bridgestone, I have to agree with you 100%. At the weigh-ins, he looked more relaxed and looked like he was ready to go. Um, when he, he looked like he was ready to go, the moment he stepped in the octagon, he was not ready to go. Maybe he was trying to convince himself that he was ready for this fight, but then once those cage doors closed, he really realized that this is not what he wanted. Um, he didn't want to be there. He wasn't all the way into it. His he was off with his punch. Um, he was knocked out with that perfectly left hook right to the jaw. He was put to sleep. He didn't know where he was. Um, it, it was shocking because of the immediacy. It happened so fast. Um, some people are still saying they can't believe it. They're witnessing history. Um, I, I to, for myself to be able to predict something like this correctly is uh, just just emphatic. I, I believe that is what Into the Arena Uncut is all about, Razor Stein, D. Don Juan Banks. But to be a part of a moment like this is something that I would tell my kids about because this this has been a long journey, right, Razor Stein? It really has been a long journey. And the whole entire time, everyone doubted Connor as his way along the journey. He was like, oh, well, you know what? He hasn't fought a wrestler yet, so he really can't you know, defend the takedowns. We haven't seen him to really defend takedowns yet. Uh, well, you know what? As soon as he fights Dustin Poignier, then he'll have his first challenge, and um, that will be a, a, big, a, a big deal for him. All right, well, Dennis Seaver. Dennis Seaver, uh, he's not that great of a fighter, and he can you know, discredit him because of, you know, he didn't have a great because Dennis Seaver's not that great, but every single time he proved it, and finally he gets to the title position and gets his title shot and finishes the champ in 13 seconds. Now he you know he wants to fight everyone else. He wants to fight everyone in the 155 and the 145. So he'll have more than enough people to fight. So that's kind of crazy if you think about it because if he defends his belt and holds his belt for a long time, he'll be defending against the best of the best. Whereas like someone like Anderson Silva, I don't think Anderson really defended the belt against the best of the best. Where like if Connor can defend the belt and take it from Jose Otto um, and start beating people in a 155, dude, that would be pretty wild if he can uh, if he can do that because that would really show how good he really is. And he'll really go down as someone who, you know, came into a stacked division and started tearing, tearing through. Conor McGregor immediately in this fight did exactly what we said. He was establishing that distance, and that was bad for Jose Aldo to allow him to go right in the middle of the octagon and establish that distance. Um, and then when they were to trade shots, it was Conor who was more accurate and precise. And that is exactly what I was talking about on my way in video about the accuracy and the, and the youth of Conor McGregor. And that subsequently leads us into what you were saying, the wars of a Jose Aldo, what he's been in. Um, it, it just didn't go his way this night. His body probably was saying, you know, his mind was probably saying yes, yes, yes. His body was saying no. And then his mind wasn't all the way in it. So that, that even hinders him more. Yeah, yeah. Candace, how do you feel about this? Well, to be honest, I was at work, so I didn't really see everything, but I'm just now hearing all of this, and, and I've been watching. It's blowing away. It's blowing <laughs> someone like Candace away because she sees Conor McGregor in the media all the time, and she's realizing this is a guy who can back up what he's saying. I'm going to be honest, he practically fucking mind-raped Jose Otto. He practically wow. mind-raped his ass. He did. Razor Stein, you would agree with that statement. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> mind-raped. He, he performed uh, a sexual assault on his mind. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> that means that he will be traumatized, post-traumatic stress disorder, PSTD. Pretty much. He practically... <laughs> PTSD. Yes, he practically, like like I said, he practically mind-raped his ass, so... And he fell for it, so that that's what happens. And, 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 and Candace, after you go through something that traumatic, how long does it take to regain your mind again, to, to become it's, normal? It's, go, it's, go, it's probably going to take like a good, a good long time. Like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if he probably go to Dr. Phil and talk to him about all that shit. So. <laughs> the realest woman of ETA right here, the realest bitch in the game. <laughs> And this is live, and she doesn't hold nothing back, do you? <laughs> Hell no, I don't. So it's like what you see is what you get. So, so you'll think you'll see him on a couch and you know talking <laughs> to Doctor Phil and telling him about his feelings. <laughs> exactly. Wow, oh, man. Exactly. It all happened in thirteen seconds. <laughs> okay, so I saw the fight. Oh, okay. Uh, right okay. now we have Alan Navar, uh, a consultant and employee of Into the Arena, joining us live. Um, what what was your assessment? You just watched the fight. Do you think like I think he over like I'm trying to think he psyched himself out and made such a horrific rookie mistake and it's hilarious how bad this ended. It was like wow. Like, this is, like, something, like, a high school kid would do in a bully fight. Like, just bad. Um, I can't believe, like, this guy had his 18 win um, winning streak completely snapped over this. It's unbelievable. We got nothing. Tommy uh, Razorstein, um, tell us the potential financial growth of Conor McGregor now and and how he can be the face of the UFC how he can take the sport into a great direction okay um that broke all sorts of records that that yeah, gate that's just that's, that's an important factor right yes, there um, yes, there was a 6.7 million uh, dollar gate when wow. Chael Sonnen fought, uh, this is when Chael Sonnen fought um, Anderson Silva. After that, it was the, sec the next higher higher one is Conor McGregor versus uh, Chad Mendes, and that's like at seven point two. This one was at ten million. That's amazing. So we don't even know what the pay per view has done yet. We don't know, you know, if Conor McGregor bet on himself at any point in time. So, Conor could have made a lot of money. UFC sure as hell made a lot of money. And um, people know who Conor is now. I mean, the world is it will know who Conor McGregor is. They lost Ronda Rousey as, like, their main go-to person. So now the spotlight's going to be focused 100% on Conor. And he's going to lead... The way into you know the next generation of fighters, and it's going to be pretty amazing because if he can defend his belt against this murderous row, you know he will go down as one of the best champs of all time. So, you know, Chris Weidman had a good fight tonight, even though he lost. But you know, it's debatable how good he really was, and people really questioned how good he was. Reason being well, was let's do this time. Tom Ridstein wants to talk about Chris Weidman versus. I want to compare him to Conor McGregor, oh, and then my bad, my Conor, bad. and that Weidman, you know, was kind of questioned the whole entire time. Was he really that good? Because is he fighting the best competition? Is he defending his belt against the best? So that's an analogy I'm using. Whereas Conor, if he's you know, takes the belt from from Jose Otto and then defends it. Against you know the best, the best in 145 and 155. Oh my God! There's more than enough people to um, compare himself and show that show his greatness, and that would just bring so much more money to the UFC and so much more money to Connor. Alan Navar. Yes. 
me and Tommy Bridgestein, we promoted this for three a month now. That Conor McGregor was going to win. What, what, what do you think this is in, in terms of the importance to enter the arena? Well, you guys really like, called it right. You guys obviously know you're fighting, and um, obviously you know a lot about UFC and things like that, and that's actually really great. You guys obviously have great knowledge. Um, I think, um, honestly, this is really a smart thing. I mean, you guys called it. I'm, was Conor really considered the underdog in this fight? No, he wasn't considered an underdog. He was, like, at an, an even rate at one point. Um, it was up and down, but for the most part, it was even. Um, honestly, um, I think you guys really um, have a really good thing going here with um, your coverage of MMA and things like this, and I think you guys can really be really good experts on these fights, um, as long as you guys uh, take a lot of time and doing a lot of things with this. Um, you guys obviously know what you're doing, and yeah. As long as you guys see your research, like you guys have been doing, and really presenting really good data on it, and like really doing like uh, your statistics and guessing who wins, um, you guys will do really great with ET, and probably having probably um, not, um, you guys will probably have one of the best knowledges of probably YouTube for your like logical facts on MMA. So you guys seem to continue the good work on this. Conor, and, 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 and you could see it, Tommy Bridgestein, that Conor McGregor was the youthful, more youthful. He was the more younger. He was the more fresher. He was more relaxed. And would, see, that, would you see he was more hungrier, though? Of course. He wants it more. He wants he that fame. He wants that money. He wants, to, he wants to be the face of the UFC. He said that. He said that. It's amazing how relaxed he looked. You know, I mean, no one you know looks that relaxed. Connor does. He he does he does uh, deals great with the spotlight. Um, some people can't handle it. He uh, performs better under it. So he doesn't break underneath that pressure. He performs better. Most people have an adverse effect to having that spotlight, that limelight when they're uh, pressured to fight or pressured to excel in a sporting event. I'm not saying pressured to like, you know, be on stage, which isn't as difficult, because I think you know, in an athletic you know, combat world is more difficult, because you know, it's, you're competing against somebody else. So I think that Connor will continue to succeed, because if they have these fights in Ireland, you know how impossible it's going to be for someone to walk into Ireland and beat Conor McGregor in Ireland? I mean, this was Vegas, and he looked fresh and good and like looked like it was his home in Vegas. Can you imagine trying to take the belt from Conor McGregor in Ireland? Holy shit. I think that would be impossible. I just think it would be impossible. I don't think it's possible. I mean, if they have a soccer stadium filled with 70,000 crazy Irish fans yelling and screaming, going nuts, I don't know who, you know, who's going to come in and take the belt from them. I'd be scared for the Ireland cities if he lost. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, would you compare this um, loss um, compared to the Ronda Rousey loss, though? Do you think the fame got to the head of the other person, and that's what made him lose? Because he the was head of Jose Otto? Yeah, like, oh, I'm on an 18-fight winning streak, you know, the, you know, this opponent, yeah, he's good, but he's going to be a joke, and then you got knocked the fuck out. Um, Ronda didn't deal with a, you know, a verbal beating like that either, you know what I mean? Ronda usually dealt with someone who um, might talk a little bit trash, like Betch Cotera, you know, but it didn't go on long. This went on for a fucking year, you know what I mean? This was a, a brutal mental beating that he took. I don't think this was something that he was like, I'm going to overlook him because I'm making a movie, because Ronda was making two movies and she was doing all sorts of other stuff. You know, she didn't have to deal with a broken rib injury and all sorts of things. So, I think this was like something, a mental block that started to develop in his mind. Like, oh man, I don't want to lose to this guy. It's going to be even worse if I lose to him. And then as soon as you start thinking, it's going to be worse if I lose to him. Now it's, I don't want to lose. Now I'm afraid to lose. 
Now you're not. Now you're uncomfortable. And as soon as you look uncomfortable, Connors is going to feed off that. And he even said it. You know what I mean? Multiple times, like fear. It's that. It's an aroma that arouses me. And you know, it's just constant onslaught, verbal beating that he took from him. Yeah, I mean, that was um, when I saw the fight. Like you could just tell immediately he looked kind of uncomfortable and like nervous. And especially if you step in the octagon, like. If you're nervous, you're done. You're going to be killed in seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Hence Especially the if you're the champ. Yeah. I mean, if you're the champ, you shouldn't be nervous. You should feel more comfortable. I mean, it's going to give the other person a lot more confidence. Of, you know, if they feel comfortable and you look nervous, it's like, damn, I, I feel comfortable and the champ looks nervous. That, no, nah, that's going to even uh, make Connor feel even more relaxed and more comfortable. You know what it reminded me of? Uh, there was a scene from the movie The Water Boy. You remember um, they were doing the onside kick. You remember it was like the last. Um, it was like the last like set of plays, and like the kicker was looking for someone to like onside kick to, and there was that one random nervous guy, and he goes, "There's my bitch," and he onside oh, kicks man. It to him. That's exactly what this fight reminded me of. Oh man, that's brutal. <laughs> That's brutal. I mean, that's really how it is. It's like, okay, where's that? Guy? Oh, there's my bitch right there, and that's exactly <laughs> what this guy reminded me of. Oh, oh, that's brutal. <laughs> but it's correct. Yeah. Uh, and now he's so, like, oh, that wasn't a fight. Um, you know, we should have a rematch. I saw that in like uh, a recent article I just read like a couple minutes ago. It's like, really? So you mean people pay hundreds of dollars to say that you choked? Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, know, you make people pay $80 for babies to see you choke, saying, yeah, you know, we should have a rematch and things like that. So what, you want people to pay $160 to make you choke again? What are you, Tony Romo in the playoffs, bro? What the fuck? <laughs> Don't give me Tony Romo, man, for real. I'm sorry, I had to. Well, <laughs> Don't give me on it. Oh Jesus! I hate, I, was like, I fucking hate the Cowboys, man. I swear to God, I do. Well, that dude. Um, oh. um, well, unfortunately for that fighter, he's as broken as Tony Romo's collarbone. So. Whoa. Oh. So yeah, um, shocking fight, I have to say, but um, yeah, it was, um. I have to say, like, he was psyched out, obviously. Like, who rushes like that? So, there you go. You know what? He didn't block well either. And I'll, I'll say that one part. I mean, Jose Otto should have been able to block that a lot better. You know, if you're going to throw that strike, you're also going to bring up your hand to block. And Connor got in, right in, and picked it right off in his first punch. I don't know how he saw it that fast. Was like he saw an opportunity that fast within the you know first ten seconds of the fight. He saw an opportunity to exploit and you know give a finishing punch within ten seconds. I mean, he saw his hand lower when he started raising his hand up, his other hand up to throw that punch. And as soon as he saw that hand lower, he gave him a clean knockout punch. That's impressive to see that. So you could argue, hey, I figured this out within 10, ten seconds. I was able to mentally destroy this guy through the course of an entire year. And within 10 seconds, I figured out you know, a flaw in his game and I exploited it. It wasn't a lucky punch by me. I just exploited a weakness that I saw within 10 seconds and I finished him. So that's why you, know, you really can't debate why you want the title shot... To a rematch, because it really should go to Frank Yeager. Frank Yeager, I don't know if he'll be able to withstand the onslaught of verbal beating, or will Frank Yeager be able to dish it out? I don't know. I'm interested to see, but you know what? My prediction is this. Nobody would beat Conor McGregor in Ireland. No one. I think Frank Yeager should be next is the more much compelling fight. And also, Frank Yeager has been more vocal. He's been more um, open. You know, remember he was more of a shell when he first started in the UFC. He, he makes a lot of comments on things. He goes on shows and he's talk, And he basically was saying, you know, Conor McGregor, you know, he, he wants to fight him to see if he's really the real deal. And, and, that, and, that, and that is a fight that 
everyone is going to want to see because because the thing about Frankie is he always comes to fight, and so you don't have to worry about a boring fight. And he and he get he has his angles and he has his level changes and he he's just like you said, Razor Stein, an overall complete mixed martial artist, and that is what's going to make the fight so compelling. Is uh, is, is 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 Edgar uh, able to take? With Connor can dish out and continue to fight him no matter what, because Edgar is a very durable, resilient fighter. Yeah, and the great thing about Edgar is Edgar comes up with great game plans. I mean, he has a heart like no other, and he comes up with great game plans. So it will be a, a difficult fight for Conor McGregor. But if, if he has to go into Ireland, I just don't see it happening. I don't see anyone taking the belt away from Conor McGregor in Ireland for a long, long time. But I could be wrong, but I don't think I will be. Razor Stein, this is something you have foreseen. You believed in this, and you put all your effort into this. You showed up um, very frequently recently to be outspoken on this fight. It turned out exactly the way that you saw it. Where the, does Jose Aldo go from here? Ooh, Jose Aldo? Maybe he can fight um, Ricardo Lamas or have him fight Chad Mendez again or um, Cub Swanson or um, Chang Sung Jung, the Korean zombie. When Korean Zombie comes back from military leave, that'd be pretty cool. He said he, uh, he he spoke a lot about Ronda Rousey. Um, he said that she won't come back from a knockout like that. Now we have to direct that question to Jose Aldo. Can he come back from a knockout like this? I don't see Aldo being a man to walk away, especially the pride that he has in Brazil. Um, I I I, I do see him coming back. Um, I don't think that he's going to be given a rematch because of. Uh, just the the brutality and the immediacy of the knockout, and he doesn't get along with UFC brass, so I see him um, maybe having a couple of more fights. I don't know if it will go his way or not, but um, and then probably his career will be over. Or he could have a clash with Dana in over a rematch, and and maybe this could be it for him. Um, do you see this a potential in for Jose Aldo? It could be. I mean, I don't know how much longer he'll he'll continue fighting. He had a ten year run, which I know is amazing. And does he have to keep proving himself and go through these wars? I don't know. It's the the few people who do get their belt back. It it was like Randy Couture did it. George St. Pierre did it. I think BJ Penn. But like, it's so, so few. The people who lose their belt and try to get it back, oh, my God, it is nearly impossible. One in a hundred get their belt back. So many it wouldn't times. be bad if he fights a couple more times and, and hangs it up. Huh? Rampage Jackson, uh, Leoto Machida, to, to, uh, Rashad Forrest Evans, to Forrest Griffin. The BJ Penn, they don't get their belt back. It is hard to get their belt back. Um, it's that their belt anymore. That's what they have to re re realize. It seems like the only one that's probably going to get their belt back is John Jones because he was stripped of the damn title. Uh, going into that subject, DC Daniel Cormier, he came into the octagon after this bloodbath of a fight between two elite mixed martial artists. It was Chris Whiteman defending the middleweight championship of the world against Luke Rockhold. Your assessment, Tommy Razorstone. Um, Weidman against Luke Rockhold. I was betting on Luke Rockhold, so I'm pretty happy that he did win. Um, I thought it would go down the way I saw it with the leg kicks. Congratulations. Uh, the body kicks really did pay off. So I didn't see him taking him down, though. But I thought he was, it was going to keep him more of a distance fight. But I knew that Luke Rockhold's leg kicks was going to definitely play a big factor in him winning the fight. Uh, the ground and pound that Weidman took, I think it was in the 
third um, was brutal, man. I mean, that was brutal. A lot of people say that should have been stopped. But I'll give it to the champ. I mean, it's not an over-the-hill fighter who's been around too long and can't take too much punishment. This is a, this is a person who's had his belt, who you know, has his belt and doesn't want to lose it. So I, I, I allow the ref to um, give that fighter more leeway and take more of a punishment because that is his belt. So I'll give him that. I'm not going to say you have to beat the champ to beat the champ, but I'll give the champ more leeway when taking a beating. I agree with you 100%. It was a beating. It was a bloodbath. Wyman was actually coming back in that fight until he did the spinning uh, wheel kick. Um, was that a big mistake? If he, if he landed it, it wouldn't have been, but, you know, he didn't land it, and he wasn't able to defend that takedown. And it's so strange, man. You see wrestlers who get taken down, and that is a, a game killer right there. Um, Brock Lesnar was taken down by Kane once, and Brock just started breaking down mentally. It's so hard for wrestlers to deal with being taken down. Now they say, oh, well, wrestlers have a hard time on their back, and they, they're like turtles. Not so much. I mean, maybe in the beginning stages, but like nowadays, I think it's, I think it's still true, is wrestlers have a hard time you know, being taken down. It really fucking bothers them. They don't like it. They really don't like it. Um, I mean, it doesn't mean they absolutely 100% lose, but it really throws them off their game. And after he got taken down and he got ground and pounded and he was, you know, out of it, you now he was, he was you know, heading to, to uh, the losing bracket. Chris Weidman took uh, punishment tonight. Uh, do you see him coming back the way that he was before? I don't think he'll get his belt back, no. But he deserves a rematch. Yeah, sure, if you want to give him a rematch. But you know what? Yoel Romero, um, he might be getting a, a, a title fight. He barely won, though. He barely won over Jacques Array. I think that was a 10-8 a, a round, though. So I think that's why Yoel Romero won that. Because he division, beat the crap out of Jacques Array in the first round. What do you think, Don? Yeah, I agree with you. Um, Yo Romero made it out of that fight. It was going to be a tough fight no matter how you looked at it. Um, I think you give Whiteman a rematch because uh, – devastatingly did something in a UFC that never was done before, and that's beat Anderson Silva twice. Uh, but as you said, some people wanted that to be more decisive. Um, what I believe is that uh, Whiteman fights him again, or, or, he, or yeah, I, I feel that Whiteman will fight him again. He took big punishment where he possibly will be medically suspended for six months just like Ronda Rousey because, you know, he has two gash. I mean, he has a gash in, in the middle of his forehead, and he had a huge cut underneath his eye. That's going to take a long time. And he took an extreme amount of punishment. He lost a lot of blood in that fight. Weidman was never taken down or dominated in that fashion ever. Luke Brockhold showed the ability to, even when he was tired, he was able to regain himself. And he said that he was on antibiotics and he was sick. And Rizestein, you know all about that. You competed while you were sick. Can you tell us the dimensions behind that? Um, I'm sorry, say that again? You have competed before while being sick. Uh, Luke, Wright, uh, Luke Rockhold said that he was on antibiotics. Can you tell us the dimension behind that? Well, when you're competing when you're sick, I had a friend of mine who had bronchitis, and he was competing when he was sick. And that's that was impressive that he could wrestle through bronchitis. I'd never seen anything like that. But you know, most people they they can't go through that. It's just so fucking exhausting. It's it's mentally beating. It's it's physically beating. You have to be a rare rare person to go through that. That's about it. Uh, Tommy Razorstein. Um 
Luke Rockhold. He he has ascends to the top of the UFC. Many people have thrown Vitor Belfort name back out there. He just knocked out Dan Henderson. He knocked out Luke Rockhold in Brazil at a time many people suspect that he did performance enhancement drugs. Do you see Vitor being next if Whiteman does not take the rematch? Mm. No, I still want to see um, Yoel Romero be next in the lineup. Yoel Romero, soldier of God. Um, you, you know, he, he defeated Jacare in the middleweight division tonight, uh, barely. Um, Yo Romero, he, he destroyed Lyoto Machida. Um, he won that controversial fight against Tim Kennedy. Um, his claim to fame is the speech that he gave after his win over Lyoto Machida. Yeah, it's kind of um, questionable what he meant in that speech, and a lot of people uh, either like it or don't like it. Uh, you'd have to check out the entire speech. I, I don't want to get into exact words of what he said, because <laughs> I don't want to take a side on it um, or weigh my opinion on that speech, but it's really interesting. You can uh, check that speech out in, uh, on YouTube. But could something like that hinder his progress? Um, a, a speech like he gave? Yeah. Maybe, but he, you know what? He also um, is in, his English isn't his first language, so people might have misunderstood him, or maybe he had a hard time explaining himself, so it's still really questionable whether he um, was, you know, saying homophobic slurs or something, you know, s similar to it. Welterweight division, a man that you truly dislike, Damian Maya. You believe he is a very boring fighter. Defeated Gunnar Nelson. Gunnar Nelson looked like a human punching bag. Um, he did absolutely nothing but get his ass kicked for three rounds. It was a whopping punch disparity. Gunnar Nelson didn't even throw any shots. So although it was a spectacular performance by Damian Maya in the welterweight division, it was an absolute horrible performance by Gunnar Nelson, and he has to be thinking about retirement. I don't know. I mean, if I was him, I'd be thinking about the missed opportunity that you have, which was if you were able to strike on your feet and make it a standing striking fight, you would have been able to beat him because Maya sucks on his feet. He, you know, is one of the best in, in the, on the ground game, but, man, he is he terrible when it comes to a stand-up striking fight, all he wants to do is bring it to the ground. I can't stand Damian Maia. He's one-dimensional. He's that old-style kind of fighter where you can get by with having one dimension, and it kind of bugs me to see someone still around like that. I don't see him ever being champ, and he said that he should get a title fight. He's out of his mind. He'll never be able to stand and strike if someone can, you know, stop his takedowns, he'll never be able to stand and fight, and he'll never be champ, and I don't think he'll ever get a title fight again. The featherweight division, Max Holloway defeated Jeremy Stevens. That was a good fight, and you know what? Um, Holloway was uh, the only person in the UFC who went the distance with Conor McGregor, and, and uh He's on an eight-fight win streak. He looked great in that fight tonight. He looked comfortable. He looked like he was um, pressing the, you know, Jeremy Stevens. It was, it was a, a very good performance. He was unpredictable. He kept switching um, his strikes up. He wasn't. Um, he looked like a different fighter. He looked like a, he went to a new level. He was impressive tonight. So I want to see if, um, if he'll get a rematch against Conor McGregor in the future. Your right favor was victorious in the bantamweight division. His competition has uh, stepped down once again. He usually wins some of these, uh, you know, he beats these lower tier fighters and he, they put him in the main event because of his marketability. He was going out saying that he should get a shot at Conor McGregor. Um, do you see that as being a big money fight? Yeah. Oh, you do. Who was that again? That wasn't me. 
<laughs> it's uh, unknown. Who is the unknown? I heard somebody say, "Yeah, I don't, I don't, I just don't know who it is." Yeah, who said yeah? Unknown. It's it's uh. uh speak hey, now. Uh, hold your peace. Oh, uh, uh, who? Yeah, speak now. But is your mic working? My my mic is working good. So. Razor Star. My my I'm fine. Uh well. Do you do you see Uriah Faber and uh, and Conor McGregor being a big money fight? Um, maybe I could I could see it happening, but um, I don't think that um, Uriah Faber is that good of a fighter. Uh, he's 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 really well liked, but I don't see it's rolling the the diehard diehard fans. Conor McGregor is bigger than him. There's it is a big difference. Yeah, this doesn't make sense. Um, uh, the Conor McGregor said in the next two fights he would be a two weight champion. Um, as you know, UFC on Fox is coming on next week. It's Rafael dos Anjos versus Donald Cowboy Cerrone, and Conor McGregor will be watching it attentively. Uh, the winner of that, I don't believe Dana will let him fight at the 155 division. Um, but do you see the potential of, he says, he, no doubt about it, he wants Donald Cowboy Cerrone. If Cerrone was able to pull off a victory, which he could possibly do, he's on a, a huge win streak right now, with, how close do you think that fight could actually come to fruition, Donald Cowboy Cerrone, if he was the uh, a lightweight champion versus the featherweight champion, Conor McGregor? Man, that would be a crazy fight, wouldn't it? That would be awesome. That would get, you know, crazy, crazy view. Pay-per-view would be through the roof on that, man. Now, Donald Cerrone has to beat um, um, Dos Anjos, or Rafael Dos Anjos, uh, so it's going to be really hard. And if he is the champ and they those two fought, that would be pretty wild. That'd be really wild. I would love to That's see the that. Fight, the fight fans want to see greatly. Let, let's go back to this, ladies and gentlemen. If you're just joining us, Alan Navar, Conor McGregor shocks the world and knocks out Jose Aldo in just a mere 13 seconds, making his prediction come true. How do you see the media running with this? Um, pretty much what they're going to do is they're going to overshadow Conor McGregor, obviously, and then finding out how the other fighter is going to bounce back from this. And obviously there's going to be a rematch to be claimed. Um, can he get the right mental state to actually do a legitimate rematch? Is it going to last 13 seconds? That's up for him to know and us to know. So we'll see where we go from there. I mean, it was a humiliating fight. He looked like wow. a complete clown. But yeah, can he bounce back from this? We'll see. It was it was Jose Aldo saying that Conor McGregor was Joker the Clown, but Aldo is the one who turned out to be Joker the Clown. Candace, <laughs> Jose Aldo lost tonight. He looked like Joker the Clown. He's humiliated. He's embarrassed. Do you see a purpose of a rematch here? Like that said. If, like I said, it's going to take like a lot of therapy and a lot of sessions with Dr. Phil for him to even bounce back from this. <laughs> but, like I, but this is like oh another one of statement. <laughs> but like I also said, this is what happens when you talk shit to the wrong person. Because once you talk shit to the wrong person, you your ass is going to be humbled. And Jose just got humbled tonight, so... Like I that's said, right. if you, that's what that's what I always say. It's like you like you took a whole lot of stuff, you a whole lot of shit. It's gonna take that one motherfucker to make to make you shut the fuck up, and that's what happened. <laughs> Candace, you hear? <laughs> Candace, you hear about Conor McGregor in the media all the time. You've been watching Into the Arena. There's been a lot of coverage behind Conor McGregor. You saw Ronda Rousey get knocked out three weeks ago. 
I heard about it. I was shocked about it because, like I said, like I, I was going to say this about Ronda Rossi. It's like not since Buster Douglas wow. beat Mike Tyson, we have never seen nothing like that. So, <laughs> I mean, but like I said, that's the same thing with, with Ronda Rossi. Like I said, she got to go through a whole lot of therapy and and all that other stuff. <laughs> she, even think about going up against the ring again. But like I, but like I said, if she feel like she can do it, she can't. But I think she's not gonna do it. She can't do it. She need to get her shit together before she even think about getting into the UFC with anybody ever again. Now the realest woman of ETA, we want to do this live, okay? Let me tell you this live, Candace. If you didn't know, yes. I'm gonna inform you and update you right now here live. Ronda Rousey is expected to fight Holly Holm in a rematch in July. Um, a lot of people do not believe she is ready for this. Like you said, you said she need therapy. She recently did an interview with ESPN, and she said it'll be three months before she eat an apple. She's lost teeth. She has loose teeth. You remember her mouth got split open. Do you think she should be fighting a woman that beat her that bad in just six months? And you said that it's going to take months for her to get herself back together again. How do you feel of a rematch being made that quickly? I, You know what I really think? I think Dana White is almost like the Jerry Jones of UFC. He's just like a bad attention whore. He's just doing it for the... <laughs> he's just doing it for the attention. That's all that is. Wow. But, I, but so you think, think Dana is bluffing? You think Dana is bluffing? Dana has no intention of putting her in there, but for the attention, he will keep talking about it. Exactly. Oh, so you don't believe him at all? You just believe it's just hype. I, be, mm. I like I said, he's he's an attention whore, and like I said. He's just like Jerry Jones. No one's like that. That's terrible. No, that's that's rude. That's uh, that's horrible. That, unknown, no one's that level. Unknown. Unknown. Do you have that level. Level. Come on. Unknown. We can hear your microphone. Unknown. <laughs> unknown. Your microphone is working. Do you have any comment on this? I guess not. <laughs> Nobody as low as Jerry Jones. I do have to make one mention of Jerry Jones, though. Um, <laughs> Jerry Jones's logic, you know, let's never forget that no one throws a perfect spire on um, pass like Brandon Whedon. And then two <laughs> weeks later, the dude gets cut. Anyways, move on. <laughs> Alan Navarre, Jose Aldo was put to sleep. Rockabye baby. Um, get a bedtime story. Um, get him some milk. Milk and cookies. Uh, <laughs> Maybe he'll wake up by the time Santa Claus arrives. That'll be awesome. <laughs> Look at Razorstone. He's laughing there. Um, I know. I know. Uh, he was put to sleep. He was out. He didn't know what was going on. He he, he sat up and he said, what happened? Um, he said he couldn't believe it. He put his face in his towel. Razor Stein, um, the country of Brazil, are very is very disappointed in his performance. Uh, we, 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 I, I asked you this before. Um, is he looking to get him back back in this cage again, or or he really doesn't want this anymore? Because Chell Chell saw something. Chell saw something. Chell said he did. He wanted. He was looking for a way out. I you know what? Thank um, you. Chael is really good at evaluating um, the mental side of fighters. There's a good video with Chael talking to Ur Uriah Hall, and he said that you know he has gone through some uh, m mental blocks in fighting, and I think Chael saw this tonight. He saw you know something in Jose that he's you know had to deal with himself before. And it's, it's something that is really important in the fight game. It's just as important as, you know, the physical ability is the mental ability. And Connor, man, he's a fucking nightmare. Alan Navar, you disagree with that? Can you tell me why? I 
actually, I half agree with uh, what the previous person said, but at the same time, though, it's like, you were choked out, man. I wouldn't want to go out that way. Um, that's just my personal, like, preference, but, like, um, I think he has one more fight left in him, maybe, and he's probably going to win, then retire. Mm. Holy... You would, you would do that, but it never happens like that. You know what I mean? They all like to do that. Uh, I'll do one more fight. I'll do one more fight. I we hardly ever see people end like that. You want to hear something? Ken Shamrock still waiting for that one fight when he wins. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the like didn't go out the way he wanted to. You know, Peter Ortiz didn't go out the way he should. Um, Hey, many Peter others, Ortiz you know. is having a good time beating up elementary school children in Bellator. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Conor McGregor defeated <laughs> Oliver Aldo in, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it was the fastest UFC title fight ever. 13 seconds. Jose Aldo, he was supposed to make the, the record books in a positive light with his undefeated streak and his title defenses. Now he makes the UFC in a very negative light for the rest of his life. Tommy Bridgestone. Fastest <laughs> in UFC title fight ever, Bridgestone. That's, that's impressive, man. I don't know how he's going to bounce back. I don't know how he's going to bounce back from this. Jose Otto took a verbal beating for an entire year, rib injury, you know, lost his belt. It's going to be really difficult for him to come back. He might fight a couple more times. Hopefully, you know, he doesn't do the Mirko Krokop thing where he takes an onslaught fucking beating and he doesn't have you know, his mental state anymore and he's too beat up, but he continues to fight anyway and walks out like Chris Levin or, you know, all these fighters who have gone on too long. So hopefully he can walk out on top, uh, win, win once and walk out and walk away. Because I don't see him getting his belt back. Yeah. You know, it, it was devastating. It was brutal. It, it was mind-blowing to see Jose Aldo lay flat as a board, as a skateboard, lay very, very flat on the octagon. Um, it was scary. Uh, some people didn't even know if Jose Aldo was even going to get up after that. And it shows you how real the UFC is. Um, they have their golden goose right now, Alan Navarre. It was Ronda Rousey, and now it is Conor McGregor. Um, the, 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 the outlook is endless. Of the possibilities and opportunities that McGregor has. What, how do you see the coverage of Conor McGregor in the future now? Well, obviously, Conor McGregor is obviously going to be the new face of the UFC. He has to at this point. Um, seriously, like, that match was like a joke, like complete domination in one punch, for God's sakes. I mean, the only way they're going to probably top it is maybe some, like, you will see fighters going to, like, hide, like, a taser under their shorts or something and tase someone before the bell rings. It's like, yeah, I won. But no, other than that, like, yeah, this is the new face right now. This is a guy that you need to build your brand around. Uh, Ronda Rousey, obviously, um, was the former face, but, you know, her time has come. Um, she got really yeah. way too greedy and out of shape, by the way. Um, she got she's way... finished. I wouldn't Rick say Stein, she's did you, did you disagree with that, Razor Stein? He said she got way too greedy and out of shape. I wouldn't say she got greedy. Um... She could have looked a little bit more toned. I'll say that. She didn't look um, oh, as toned as Holly Holm. Oh, my she God. Acted she like was fat. She was acting like she was bigger than UFC in general. I think Almost it was like a really like hard, difficult situation for her. But that's me. I mean, I love Ronda. Don's trying to hype up yeah, a fight. She was she fat. We're talking about Ronda Rousey. That's there what Don this. wants right now. Yeah. We've seen previous fights for her. She looked a lot more toned and shaped. This one, she... Like, she wasn't fat, fat. It's not like we're watching, like, freaking Awesome Kong from TNA Wrestling. But we were, like... Yeah. <laughs> Although, yeah. if that wasn't the case, I'd be scared this big, fat woman can be in the Yadagon. But, no, like... <laughs> no, like... 
Um, the problem here is in general, you can tell she was out of shape. She didn't spar. I don't think she practiced. Or I think she's like, oh, you know, I beat all these women what, all the time. Was she pregnant? Was she pregnant? Who, Awesome Khan? No, I'm talking about Rousey. Is she pregnant? No. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to ask me if Awesome Kong was pregnant. I thought she was always pregnant for like 10 years. Um, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Good grief. Oh my god. That's terrible. I, mean, I don't know. Anyways, uh, moving uh, on from Alan that. Also looked at flabby and out of shape according to Alan Navarre. Tommy Rizestein disagrees. Um, <laughs> he did, you know, like, the rep was checking out the flab, like, floating in the wind. It was crazy. Um, oh, I'm not my hating God. Better, although I am. But, but, but Alice, no. yo, you want, you want to know what I really thought about it, though? What's that? Okay, Alan, like you said, I think, you know, like I said... It's like you know, like when you know, like when like the late eighties, early nineties, when Mike Tyson was like the most dominant boxer. Yes. He had like the fifty million dollar match. He had the Bengal Tigers. He was married to Robert Givens. He had everything in the world going for him. But like I said, it only would take that one person to humble your ass. And Buster Douglas was that one person that humbled him. And I think ever since that knockout, Mike Tyson has never been the same. And now Ronda Rousey, now she don't go through this knockout. I don't think she will ever, will never, ever go through the same after like all this is like all said and yeah, done, you know? My, my mic's not I have working. a weird comparison, and I and, don't know why. Yeah, my mic's not working. Your mic um, is working. Um, she kind of reminds me. Remember when Nick Carter was the Backstreet Boys went solo? He thought he was all that. And yeah. No, I, I have no idea who that is. Um, oh, don't, shit. Do not bother. I have no idea. Do you remember <laughs> when what the Backstreet Boys did? No, I have no, no idea about that. In two thousand, like what was it? Two thousand twelve. And he thought he could be like Justin Timberlake and release the same album like Future Sex Love Sounds. And it was so unbelievably corny and generic that everyone forgot about him. That's what Ronda (laughs) Rousey is now. Like, forgettable. No one's going to care about her in two years. Oh, damn. Wow. You have to get your opinion out out here now. Compared to a Backstreet Boy. Oh, man. No, yeah. you guys need to listen to that song. It's yeah, called, what, it. what was yeah. it? It's like, I'm burning up or something. Listen to that song and tell me how generic it is. And now remember, <laughs> listen to oh Justin Timberlake God. first. No, 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 I won't listen to that shit ever. Razor Stein ain't got nothing for that. Razor Stein doesn't take shit like that. Razor Stein doesn't listen. Razor Stein only watches MMA. Exactly. Oh, yeah, I don't watch that. Ronda Rousey is in a different world. So, like, congratulations, Ronda Rousey. You made it, like, kind of here. You kind of made it in, like, the like the mainstream world, but you're not a star compared to what this person, like, destroyed you for. That's all you want. The 15 minutes is up. Yeah, exactly. That's They're all saying the 15 minutes is up, Tommy Richardson. <laughs> I mean, it seems like July we will find out. If she's, if she's I'm not going to argue with her that, you know, that the 15 minutes isn't up. You know what I mean? I, it <laughs> definitely well could be. You know what I mean? I don't know <laughs> what her <laughs> kids are going to be like. I don't know if she's going to be We're not trying to put Razorstein in a situation where he, Razorstein has said that she's in serious trouble. He has not defended anything. He did say she will lose in a rematch. Um, so it's not like Razor Stein is actually, you know, supporting the, the things that's going on. In fact, he's against it. Um, and he's aware of it. it. It's, you know, it's sad for Rousey, but it's good for Connor, where she has spelled, he has picked up. They will keep coming and they will keep growing. People fall off in the UFC every day. It's real. Um, WWE has a pay-per-view tomorrow. Um, it's called uh, the the uh, tables, ladders, and chairs. Their current champion is Irish. Yeah. Do you think they will try to benefit off of the fact that Conor McGregor has won and he's Absolutely. Irish? 
then WWE will try to benefit off of that. Oh, absolutely. Are the absolutely. Media whore leeches in the Come history on. of time. Damn. It's WWE. <laughs> no, I'm seriously, yeah, these guys, guys thought Tout was going to be good. Seriously, I wouldn't put anything past these people at this point. <laughs> Whatever happened to Tout? Is that even still a thing? They got, are these guys talking real can't hear them. They can't hear me. Yeah, we can hear you. We can, we can hear you. I know it. Put your thing off mute on like, the freaking setting. Wait, I think that you guys, you guys can hear me? Yes. Yeah. You've been we talking we we stop. Hey, how you guys doing tonight? Oh, wow. Look at that. What is your name? Hey, no. What is your name? What is your name? What the hell is going on right here? I thought it was ISIS for me. I go by the name. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Why terrible. I, know, I go by the name Mike J. We don't have a one here. It doesn't matter what religion or faith you are. You can come here. We have our first ETA vigilante here right now. How are you? Oh, man, thank you. Sir. I appreciate that. Oh, what's, what's your name again? You guys are really cool guys. You know, I enjoy Don Juan Banks all the time, man. And Tommy Ray Stein. Oh, man. Tommy Ray Stein. Don't change the subject. The best <laughs> MMA <laughs> analyst, man. The best and MMA the best analyst. Extension ETA Candace is on here right now. Um, what's your name again? Yeah, she been she been. <laughs> she been really good too. I want to know what your name is. What is your name? Oh, my name Night. My name Nightshade. I go by okay, the name Nightshade. Like seriously, oh, Nightshade? I made this up for like twenty oh, minutes. Oh God! Nightshade? No, Nightshade. Yeah. Nightshade. Night oh my God, that's like a yeah. really bad PS2 video game. Nightshade. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wasn't that oh, like wow, a <laughs> PS2? It was like the girl version of Shinobi, and it was called Nightshade. So, are you a girl ninja? Oh, no, no way, dude. I, I was doing it. He went there. Uh, yeah, he went there hard. <laughs> bro, you're, you're not this Jinder Mahal. Hi, Jinder Mahal. How you doing, bro? So when did you, when did you become acquainted with Enter the Arena? I'm sorry? When did you become, when did you uh, find out about Enter the Arena? How long have you been watching the videos? I've been watching it for about a year now. I've been seeing, like, the... You know the ups and downs and the YouTube drama and all that nonsense, but I must say, oh. like I be watching it daily, 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 <laughs> as you say. <laughs> so, uh, oh, you watch the internet? Yeah. <laughs> WWE channel too? Yeah, you, I like it, man. It's good. Yeah, yeah WWE. WWE yeah, big time. Time, I love time, it. Time, but we're like herpes; we keep coming back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting really scared of this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you wear a condom when you mess with ETA. <laughs> oh. But yes, on uh, 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 Nightshade. Yeah, the Conor McGregor tonight, man. Conor McGregor, yeah. Reign Supreme tonight, a uh, Nightshade. What is your opinion, analysis, deduction of this fight? Man, Conor McGregor had this guy defeated from before the actual bout. That's how I feel. He broke him down, you know, psychologically. He had him, you know, he had him be already. Yeah. That's a good point. That's a very good point. Like I said, Conor McGregor practically mind raped his ass. He oh. Mind -raped. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it she was ugly. Mind raped. That means he, he the, the mind, psychologically, neurally, that means that uh, uh, Conor McGregor uh, just just got inside of his head um, and, and dictated how he felt tonight. Uh, uh, Nightshade, were you shocked about the 13 second knockout fastest uh, title fight in UFC history? Um, I want to say yes, but also no at the same time. Like I knew it was going to end early, but I didn't think, like, you know, one punch and that was going to be it. You know what I mean? Like, I was just like, wow, like, you know, that just goes to show you, like, that visualization stuff that Connor does. I don't know. I mean, it might, <laughs> he might be serious about that. Like, I, I like that. That's a good point. I mean, Connor keeps calling it, too. Connor called it. First round. Yeah. 
and then that gets yeah, in the phone. That's scary. Phone. That's scary. It is. Exactly. Exactly. Well, we're glad you got to join us live. Uh, to call your own matches like oh, that. Know, by the way, um, just want to let you know, from the behalf of me and Don, welcome to this ETA uh, hangout. We really appreciate being on here. That's awesome. Yes. Oh, oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for coming. It's so great thank to interact you. with the fans because it's so good to be back and to have the Enter the Arena family here, Tommy Bridgestein, Alan Navarre, Candace. Um, it was unbelievable. This was a historic moment that we covered up to the minute. It was a journey, Razor Stein. How to tell us how it is for you to go through a journey like this, to come on YouTube every day and give people your opinion and the scrutinization and the ostracizing that you go through when you give an opinion and are confident in it. I uh, you know how it is, Don. As soon as you mention it, the, uh, the number one thing people love to say is, oh, you don't know shit. And then you have to keep explaining yourself and keep explaining yourself. <laughs> then you've got to build up, like, you know, a credibility of, like, being right and having it, you know, recorded that you were right and, like, videos that you're proving that you're right and, like, document all sorts of things. And, like, <laughs> we've been doing this for fucking years. It isn't like we just started doing this. This has been going on for years and years. We are, like... You know, yeah. we called fights for a long time and made these predictions for a long, long time. So over that time, that's where I started, like, getting more credit, more street credit. Because the first time, like, ah, oh, no, who are you? I don't know who you are. No, you don't get any credit. So it's been a while getting that street credit, you know, calling the right predictions. And, you know, uh, I don't know if C. Rich from Detroit um, could join us sometime. But um, he eventually earned some credit. He's he's pretty good at making predictions. It's hard to make those predictions. The game's always changing. Um, you know, people fill in gaps. Um, it's it's tough, man. It's real tough. Um, and I'm going to get to Alan Navar after this question. But Nightshade, did you watch the build up on Into the Arena to this fight? Nightshade, yeah, absolutely. Oh, so you did see the video? Yeah, that's nice, Shane. Yeah. And yeah, what did you I, I, like I said, I watch uh, ETA a lot, and um, you know, I was really like in, intrigued by like the the build up, the the weigh in. The weigh in was crazy. I that was like telling. You know, it gave me an idea that I thought. I mean, it gave the perception that Jose was he was ready, but. I think that was like a cover up to me. Like I, I looked at it like he was like just doing that to, to, to put on like a, a, a front almost, you know, <laughs> like like Connor read right through it, man. I, I just looked like it to me. I don't know, but the build up was awesome. It's amazing how he fell apart as soon as he walked into the octagon. I mean, man, he just looked looked down at the floor when he was announcing his name and just never really picked his head up. Properly and just never felt comfortable as soon as he walked in that octagon. And ta Connor was like taunting him, moving around the octagon, showing how comfortable he felt, and just threw him off big time. I think that's what he wants. He wants to redo that and have that. But you know what? It's part of the game. You don't get the you don't get a redo. You know what I mean? It's not like backyard football or a, re a reset button on Nintendo. You don't get it. Or one button one, that's it. Nine. Um, um, Saga, uh, 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 Alan, that reset button on Nintendo, I, I thought that starts the game over again. Yeah, no, I'm talking about Madden Replay for Madden 09, where you just click square and, like, it completely repeats the play. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. It, like, for, like, the five people who still play Madden at this point, like, uh, or p bought my Madden 09, which was a terrible game, don't ever buy it. So if you did a stupid play, whatever, you could click, I believe it was square. There is no redos. Ronda Rossi wanted to redo her fight over and over again. She said it was in her mind, replaying over and over again. She lost. Um, I'm sure she clanked her head against like a shelf like 40 times to try to replay that in her head. <laughs> it's just going on over and over again, Jose Aldo, wherever he is right now. The shame. Uh, it, it just the, it's the trauma. The, 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 the anguish. 
that is going through his mind, um, letting his country down. Uh, it, it, it's a it's a moment that that is indelible that will be in UFC history for the rest of time. 2015 has produced some exciting moments, but the end of the year has produced one of the most telling. Ronda Rousey, 12 and all, became 12 and one. She was brutally knocked out in the second round. Jose Aldo knocked out in 13 seconds, and with both fight have have in common, Razor Stein, which we did not talk about because we talked about even the little aspects. Of fighting was they were both followed up with hammer fists after they were out. There's another There's shit another that I like tonight that I'm going to talk about. Razor Stein, dude, how do you feel with the follow up punches after they were out cold? Um, I think I would have done it. Anyone else would have done it? Oh my god. It wasn't like that Ronda Rousey kick. I mean, I think she was out cold after that. I don't think there was necessary uh, punches on that one. But with this Jose Aldo one, it didn't really look like it was a Mirko Kokoff left, you know, left kick to the face where it was all, all of a sudden he was out. Um, he could argue that one a little bit. It wasn't too bad. We're, we're getting breaking news right now. Uh, we know we got some boxing people watching. Roy Jones was brutally knocked out in his fight in Russia, uh, so I guess he can uh, have some company for the night with Jose Aldo. I They both was put to sleep early tonight, and it wasn't by their mother. <laughs> wait, um, wait where's where's you, was knocked out tonight? Were you yeah. really knocked out tonight in boxing? Former uh, world champion Roy Jones uh, knocked out brutally. He's 46 years old. People are calling for him to hang it up. He got knocked out brutally. Jose Aldo knocked <laughs> out brutally. That's um, what I said. I said. Damn, how the mighty have fallen, huh? How Shit. the mighty have fallen tonight. Uh, he uh, was a in the world. Roy Jones has been in the game for a long time. He is going to be a boxing Hall of Famer. Uh, yeah. I, I think it's time. I, I think it's time. He's been knocked out multiple times in the past. We don't hmm. like to see that happen to people. Um, I'm hoping Roy Jones will call it. Uh, to, um, to be honest with you, and I don't mean to be brutal, I didn't even know Roy Jones was still boxing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, thought he, he was, I thought he was. I thought he'd been done. Roy Jones Jr. knocked out brutally. Did uh, I remember him watching him on the Waynes Brothers, and that show happened in like what 2000? They, they both fell the same fell this um, face first. Damn. Uh, they face in the canvas. Um, mm. They both went night night. Uh, they they might be having both bids together. Yeah, I suppose they, they ain't want no lip gloss because they they should be kissing that canvas. <laughs> lip gloss, both <laughs> pillows, <laughs> <and> body bags. <laughs> it is like they took some Nyquil, some Ambien. Jeremy, two night. Razor Stein. Jose Aldo, Conor McGregor, people are saying this could possibly have been the biggest fight of the year. Um, Dana needed this. Dana needed a trump card. He needed a home run. He needed Conor tonight. How do you think uh, Dana White is feeling tonight? I think Dana's going to be very happy. I mean, he just lost Ronda Rousey, so I, now he has a new face. Um, so he'll be fine. He'll be fine now. You know, I don't think he really wanted Jose. He rolls with the punches and takes who he can have, but he really doesn't try to develop the fighters as much as he, as you would think he does. But um, he, uh, he definitely has a name and face of UFC right now, and it's not Ronda Rousey. It is Conor McGregor now. McGregor is a different kind of guy. He's not the kind of guy that will show up in WWE. He's 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 more profound. Of a, he, his language is is uh, is aggressive. Um, he he's his own man. Uh, he chooses where he will show up at and what he does. He likes to be in Las Vegas, Nevada. He likes to go to the club. He likes the women. He likes that camera on him. All the time, he feeds off of it. McGregor wants the cameras. McGregor wants the publicity. McGregor wants to be on the big marquee. McGregor, McGregor, McGregor. 
you're going to see McGregor all over the place. You're going to have some negative press um, about McGregor, just as uh, Floyd Mayweather has said things in the past. Um, I think there is a stark difference between McGregor and Ronda Rousey, as you said before, Tommy Razorstein, you said there is a huge difference that Conor McGregor has proven to be the real deal and is not all about hype. Yeah, yeah. All right, Don. Well, I'm well, starting to fall asleep you know, you know, because I, didn't, I never... Razorstein, live from South Korea, uh, uh, Alan Navarre, Candace. Um, for Nightshade, we are going to wrap it up tonight in a monumental event, UFC 194 results. Peace. Peace, Peace out.